everyone and welcome back to the channel. We're going to start a new series. It's basically field to edit. And what that's going to be basically is from the moment I step out of the vehicle with the camera, taking the picture, showing what I'm doing in the field, and all the way to taking the image off the card, putting it on the computer, and then editing the image to get the end process. So that's what the series is going to be. So if you're interested in that, let's get started. So the very first things I do when I get out of the vehicle is to set a base exposure before I start walking out on the trail. And why is that? If I don't have my settings for what I'm gonna do that day and I get out here and the animal that I'm after or whatever or something pops up in front of me and I lift the camera up and I'm way overexposed, underexposed, shutter speeds off, things like that, I could miss a shot. And that may be the shot of the day. It may happen right when you get out of the, on the trail or it may be hours on the trail. But what I wanna do is be set up for success before I start moving out there. So today I'm looking for a common raven so for this first series. So that's why it's easier to set up all these base things what I do in the field on a normal basis. In the next videos, I won't be covering a lot of that stuff. So let's get that out of the way now. So for common ravens, they're not going to be like doing any fast action for the most part. So I can set my shutter speed anywhere from probably 1,000 to 2,000. And probably what I'll set this for to start off with is about 1,250, just the base speed in case I find something else along the way. Uh, my aperture for this lens, I'm gonna be shooting wide open at F4. So that just leaves my uh, ISO to adjust. So what I do right when I get out of the vehicle, first thing I do is I find something to focus on. Uh, there's a sign right over here. And when I pull that up, you'll see right off the bat, I'm way overexposed. So what I need to do first is check my aperture. So I make sure I'm F4, which I am. And then I'm gonna set, set my shutter speed. So I said 1250, so there I am. So now I'm still overexposed. So what I wanna do is drop my ISO. So it looks like the exposure is good. You see my histogram in the bottom right corner? So you see if I go to the left, like now I'm underexposed for what I wanna do. It actually says I'm proper exposed, but it's because of the snow. So remember with snow, we want to come over here and push that as far as we can to the right. So the snow's not gonna be blue or gray. And I really like to hug it because of another reason we'll talk about here in a minute. So for me, that's my base exposure setup. So I'm set up now to go out there and maybe on the fly adjust my ISO. So again, if you remember with the snow, even with my naked eye looking around right now, the snow looks gray in spots and that, oh, hang on, there's a moose right over here. Let me get this guy real quick. Wow, see, that's what I meant by not being prepared already with your exposure if i hadn't set that base exposure i couldn't have got what i just got right then which is really cool so again back to the snow because i got distracted because of the moose over here so i think we're gonna do moose before we go do ravens so uh anyway so for snow my naked eye again this is all gray and blue in the shadows so if you overexpose you're going to get rid of that blue and that gray we talked about that in a previous video back i think with the fox video so that's what I'm going to do. So I want to overexposure. So if you see my histogram today, if you see that really bump in the right close to it, that's what I'm going to do all the time. I'm going to really push that. Sometimes I'll push it past it if I'm doing a high key image for especially these ravens that are so dark. So let's go out here and walk around and get this moose a little bit and then we'll go shoot the ravens. Talk to you here in a minute. Also, we have the 4,000 print giveaway in this video also. It'll be somewhere amongst this video. So just watch the whole video and you'll find the giveaway somewhere in this video. I'm also gonna do an extra print giveaway because it's been a one year anniversary of this channel. One year ago, I released my very first video on this channel. It was the doll sheep video. That'll actually be the end cap of this video. So at the end of this video, there'll be something for you actually to watch. And uh, anyway, so I have two print giveaways. It's somewhere in this video, so keep watching and you'll see who won. We got two moose. It's a calf and a mom.
All right, that's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see these guys here. There they are. And I could hang out with these guys all day long, but we need to get moving back to the uh, Ravens. Oh, so yeah, that was really cool to be able to find these moose right when I stepped out. Uh, I'm gonna get back to the truck real quick because since they're so close to right where I parked, I didn't grab my gloves. I just ran out real quick with the camera, got those shots. So let's get back to the truck and we'll talk about our setup and uh, what we're doing. Talk to you in just a minute. All right, that's a prime example of why you get your camera settings done before you start going in the field because right there we ran into moose right off the bat. Really cool. And uh, now I'm gonna go get my ravens that I was gonna get before the video, the subject of the video is gonna be, but I have a big problem right now. This trail that I was gonna go to where the ravens I know hang out down there and hear some you know, squawking and stuff, the moose is on the trail, so I can't get there right now. So I have one or two options. I can wait that moose out, which I may do for a little bit, or go look at another location where I know the ravens are. The good thing about ravens, they're pretty common, so they should be pretty easy to find. But I'm gonna wait these guys out a little bit. And actually, there is an eagle in a tree right behind me. He is literally just right up in that tree, right along in there at the top. He's actually in the same spot that that eagle was for the R7, how to use the R7 in the field uh, autofocus. Um, real quick about the camera, what we're using today, we're using the Z9 again with the EF500 Mark IV. This cable you're seeing here is the HDMI cable. I can't find my little small curly one. I've got this bigger, longer one here today. Hooked up to the Atomo so I can show you the viewfinder, what I'm seeing in the camera today. So that's what we're shooting today. That's how we're set up. And uh, so as soon as I find my Ravens and we start recording those and taking the pictures, I'll get back with you. So hopefully I'll talk to you here in a minute. All right, the moose have moved off the trail, uh, which is really nice. They went over here on the side and bedded down, which they usually do around noon or so this time of year. And let me show them to you real quick. And there they are. They're bedded down on a little side trail, game trail they're using off of this. And you can hear my raven behind me, the ones I'm gonna go after here in a second. So that's where they are. So that's really cool, but that just means that I can go down this trail and go find my ravens now. So we'll do that and I hope these guys don't come back on the trail and block me to get back to my truck when I'm getting out of here. So let's go look for the ravens. Talk to you here in a minute.
right, I am done shooting those ravens. And uh, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to run back to the house and pull these images off this card. I'm getting this Atomos off now so I don't forget later and get up the house and forget to, to pull the card out of this thing. But anyway, we're gonna edit that moose shot. We're gonna go edit that raven shot. I'll show you how I pull these images off the card, how I get them into the computer. And basically my real quick editing process. Uh, this won't be a super in-depth editing because these should be quick edits, hopefully, because uh, if I got it right in camera, shouldn't have a lot of editing to do. So let's run to the house. Let's go pull these off the card and let's get after it. See you at the house. All right, the very first thing I do when I get back to my house is I will take the card out of the camera and I transfer all the images in the video to an SSD drive. And that's how I store my images and edit off of this. I don't store or edit anything off the computer. And the computer I use is the MacBook M1 Pro 16 inch. A beautiful screen, great trackpad, works great. I can actually edit in my recliner if I want to, which I do most of the time. So after I've got the images onto the SSD, then the next thing I do is I call my images. So I use a program called Fast Raw Viewer, and it makes it real nice where I can just go to the drive I need real quickly, go through these images, because it pulls up the next image extremely, extremely fast. And it also gives you a histogram over here on the right, tells you information about the image also if you need to. And you can zoom in and look at your specific part of the image or zoom out, see if your tag's sharp, which the eyes on this one are not sharp. So anyway, that's why I, I call my images and reject them and throw them out, which I've already done. After I've done that, I will open up a program I use called DxO Pure Raw. So for Canon, it's a must have, and for Nikon, I found out it's a must have also. For some reason, Lightroom does not load the correct camera profiles. So with this application, it will load the correct profiles. So let me just open something up real quick. Um, just to show you how that works real quick. Go into my raw folder. I'm just gonna pick any folder in here, doesn't matter which. Uh, click a couple images here, click open. And then I get it processed. So I can process my images. And the very first time you do it, it will ask you for that camera profile if you haven't used it on this application so far. And after you do that, you can tell it process, save it to a file. You can actually do some lens correction sharpening if you want to. I leave it on so far it hadn't given me an issue. But anyway, that's how I pre-process my images before they go into Lightroom. So after that, I open up Lightroom and then I import my images um, off the folder that I saved these images. And then from there, I go through and I will mark these three star, four star, five star, color code them if I see a keeper, I'll flag them, all those type of things. I've already gone in here and pulled a couple images that I want to edit for this video here. And one is the, of the calf moose and one is with the raven. But what we're going to do first, we're going to go do the, the bull calf. This is a bull because you got a little bit of a couple of horns here. Uh, why did I pick this picture? Um, a couple things is it. It's a nice picture of him, I like he's got his ears up, and I also have a couple of things I want to show you how to take care of this stuff on the right, because I don't like this little red pole, and I don't like these little twigs sitting here, because we're going to smooth this area out. The very first thing I do when I start to edit an image is I apply a color profile, and we get to that for is right up here at the top, you see the little, little four bars here by profile. You get, uh, looks like seven of them to start with from Adobe, but I use some built by Jan Wagner and Glenn Bartley uh, from the Bird Photography Show on YouTube. Go watch it. Very, very good. And I'll link to their site where this these pro, pro sets, they call them, it's color profiles, that they have linked. It's a good starting point. They're very, very good, and I like them. I use them on every picture. Uh, I'm not getting any money from the Bird Photography Show. I just, it's something I use every time. I'm going to tell you guys about it. That's going to, that I, it helps me every day, so hopefully it'll help you. But anyway. This is the page. I'll link it in the bottom so you can test out their process if you want to look it up yourself. But anyway, we're going to go now, go down to all those process and apply it. So again, as these process, what you do, if you just hover over them, they show you what the change is going to be like. One of my use on my birds almost all the time is this yellow vibrant one I use all the time. It seems to pull the colors out pretty good. Um, 
it brings the reds out and stuff. It, I noticed all these pretty much, and I accidentally applied that one, didn't mean to. But we're gonna go down here and apply this yellow vibrant one to it. I kinda like this one. That's a little much. I may have to mute this down a little bit more, but it gives you a good starting point to bring those shadows out, apply the color profile a little bit better, and I like it. So we're, that's where we're gonna start at. All right, from here, the very next thing I do always is I go in here and go ahead and just mask my subject real quick. And we're going here, and it did pretty good. Um, it grabbed this pole, which is fine with me. I think it grabbed this one, and it grabbed this bit of white branch. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and take this out here, because when I push the whites in this thing, I don't wanna push the whites here. So let's go ahead and subtract that in the mask. So how I do that is I click Subtract, Brush, all right? You go in here and zoom in a little bit on his butt here. So come in here, I got a fairly large brush, that's fine, because this thing will actually mask close to that guy. So I'm just kind of, just real quickly getting in here and getting dirty. Doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. Um, I could be more exact, but we're doing real quick edits today. We're not, uh, these aren't final for print, even though we'll get to there with this one. But let me just go in here real quickly, just kind of mask out that Y. Doesn't have to be perfect. Get that little bit right there. And that's pretty good. Um, let's go down here to this pole. I don't think it's masked, but we'll just try it real quick. I'm going to leave this guy. Now let's go ahead and mask this out. Let's get it real quick. Again, it's just real easy to do. Just come here with this track brush. Just do it. That's why I like this MacBook. Uh, this trackpad is very good. I I have a tablet that I use with the when I was using the PC or the Windows unit before, and I would do all that Windows machine, not Windows unit. But anyway, uh, we are masked now on this moose calf. So the next thing I'm gonna do, the very first thing I do is I'm gonna touch just a touch of clarity because I wanna bring a little bit of the darks back on him. A little bit, just a touch. And we're gonna go ahead and do a 50% zoom here on his little head so I can see what I'm affecting. A little more contrast. So let me bring that clarity back down to zero. Turn that mask off, we don't see it. Drag just a little bit over. So what I don't want is I don't want to add too much detail. This image is extremely sharp already. For texture, I could bring it up. And what's going to happen when you texture, you notice you're going to get more detail. And if you push it too much, it just looks funny. But for this guy, I kind of want to soften his, his uh, fur down a little bit. Because even at zero, it's, it's uh, a bit sharp. I mean, their hair is pretty coarse to begin with, but I'm going to bring it down about negative five in here somewhere. Negative six is fine. I'm just softening him up just a hair. Now, the next thing I want to do since I soften it down is I want to come in here real quickly. I want to subtract this eye, and there'll be a reason for this later. So let me hit the subtract again. I'm going to put a different brush in here. Reduce the size of this brush. It's up here in the top right corner. And we're going to hit the hit I'm um, hitting O to bring my mask back up so I can see it. What I'm going to do is subtract it over this eye. And the reason is the most important part of an animal to me, or bird, is the eye. So I want to preserve that because uh, I moved the texture down, I remember, a little bit while ago, and I don't want to do that to the eye. So let's go back out. Let's take, hit O to get our mask back out. We're going to go back down to 50% zoom back on this guy. All right, so we did our texture a little bit, a little bit of clarity. And the reason I do that first is because um, if I'm moving my white, my shadows, it's going to affect that, that clarity, but that texture is going to affect the white balance. Not the white, but the whites anyway. Um, I'm going to sh sharpen just a hair, and I'm actually adding a little bit of noise on him. He's almost too clear. All right, so I just brought the, that noise back a little bit. Should add a little bit in there. Uh, if you move to the right, you're going to smooth a little bit. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna to touch the shadows just a touch. Let me, let me zoom back out. Bring the shadows just up just a hair. I mean, he's pretty nice already. Bring the whites up a little bit. And the reason I'm bringing the whites up, I wanna bring that snow up on him a little bit more that's on him. And I'm gonna do almost all my editing here as far as colors and stuff in Lightroom. Sometimes I do, we'll take them if I do, need to do more dodge and burning, I'll take it to Photoshop. We're not doing that today because I'm not doing either one of these images. Um, I'm gonna actually, now I'm gonna leave him a black slum. All right, he looks okay. We may touch him again here in a second. Next thing I'm gonna do is I come down to my curve and I always come to my light 
And because when you're doing raw, your, your pictures are a little flatter, which is what it's supposed to be. Um, and I want to add a little bit of uh, this curve, a little bit, I touch it just a little bit, 10. See, don't want to mess my highlights. Oh, I messed my highlights. I think I'm pretty good there. Just brought the, the lights up just a touch. All right, I think we're in a pretty good starting point. I'm actually gonna come in hit back into my mask. I'm gonna bring those whites down just a little bit. This was pretty good out of camera to start with, to be honest with you, I liked it pretty much. All right, so the next thing I do is I'm gonna create another mask. Now I'm gonna go do the eye. Remember we subtract that a minute ago from the eye? So I'm gonna jump in here about 200% to get real good on this head so I can mask this eye. We hit create new mask again. We're going down to brush. Now I'm just going to paint that eye in. I'm not going to get that white too much, but I do it really make it bad. Um, I have a bunch of uh, effects in here. They're actually just brushes that I've already bought or had created. Now you got this one called Eyes Catch Light. This is more for people and wedding photography, but I picked it up a while back because it had a lot of neat little uh, brushes and settings already in it. So I hit that and applies it. And what it's doing in here, we can look at it real quick, is bringing the exposure up a touch, the contrast up a touch, the highlights up a touch, the whites up quite a bit, dropping the shadows, increasing the saturation, and a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of sharpness, that's all it's doing. I don't like the color, so I'm gonna bring the saturation back a little bit. And I'm going to bring these whites back a touch and the highlights just back a touch. Again, all brushes and pro sets and anything that you pick up like this, they're just a starting point. And I think that looks okay. Let's zoom out and see how she looks. And what you can do, you can click this little eye icon up here and you can turn it on and off. See, it's a very subtle, go back to, to 50% here and look at it. If I can get the right spot, that is. So it's on now, we'll turn it off, on. It's very, very subtle, Let's turn it back on. All right, that's about it from there. Um, we could go in here, let's say you didn't like this white in the, the colors here, and you already wanna change the background a little bit. What you can do is you can actually come in here and, and hit the mask icon again, hit create new mask and select the subject again, and then you hit this little three little lips right here, click it, and go invert. So now what that's done, that's selected everything except for our mousse. From here, maybe you wanted to bring the whites up a touch, brighten the image up, maybe, maybe you wanna bring the shadows up a little bit, whatever. I'm not gonna do anything with that um, right myself, so we're just gonna leave it alone. And we are done with this image in Lightroom right now. So a couple things, like I said earlier, I don't like about this image is right here. I don't like this red pole. And these little twigs in here, to me, are just a little distracting over here. Again, you wanna keep your eye on this subject and they do pull your eye off a little bit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to Lightroom. We're gonna get rid of this pole. Now I could just make this pole lighter where it's kind of just real faded. And I could probably fade these out in Lightroom too, but it's real much quicker to go do this in Photoshop. So let me show you how to remove some objects in Photoshop. So let's right click the image, go edit in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get rid of this red pole first. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over here on the left, you're gonna grab the lasso tool, third one from the top on the bottom. So we're just gonna draw a circle around this guy. That's it. You're gonna come up to edit, content aware fill. Just click that. Just bring up a little window, it's gonna show you how it did it. And look down here, it looks pretty good to me. It looks like it masked it out pretty good. And we're gonna hit okay. And then to get rid of the little marching ants in the bottom, you just, for a Mac, you hit uh, Command D. And so now we got rid of that. Looks fairly natural, a little, little bit of a blur in there, not a big deal, we can fix that here in a minute, back in Lightroom. All right, so we're gonna get rid of these two guys. So let's get rid of these twigs here first. Again, same thing, just circle them out. Edit content or web fill. Now we're gonna to do something different here this time when this comes up, because it for some reason it does this next time. Make sure you click, or this is checked, sample all layers. Click that again. Make sure this is set to auto, and boom, it looks like it's gone right here. Let's hit okay on that one. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get this branch over here, same thing. Circle it real quick. Again, edit, content, or where fill. 
Boom, 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 da -dum, boom. And she is gone also. This time it kept the sample all layers. Hit OK. Oh, great. Well, you notice over here you have the layers that you can, you can turn them back on and off if you want to. Um, you know, this is, this is bugging me a little bit, so let's just go ahead and grab this whole little area here. And I could have done this Lightroom, but I'll just do it here real quick because I'm here. Could have done with the healing brush too, but since we're already here, it got rid of most of it, not all of it. Um, Control D. That's interesting looking, but we're going to go fix this over in Lightroom real quick. All right, so let's hit File, Save. So the good thing about winter is you can high key your images. You can overexpose snow and be fine. It looks ethereal and misty and stuff. And that's kind of what we're going to do here. We're going to make a brush and just kind of wipe it out. All right, back to Lightroom. All right, we are going to, because see now our stuff's gone, we're going to make another brush. We're going to do a brush here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do shadows higher, whites a little higher, not much. We're going to come down here and we are going to drop the texture, clarity, sharpness, and shove this noise all the way up here. I'm going to make this brush bigger. We're come down here and just kind of paint this area in a little bit, and that should smooth that area out quite well. There we go. Looks fine to me. So at this point, pretty much have a done image right there. So I removed my distraction on the right. Uh, yeah, that pole there with the, the rail looks kind of weird off the right because it's disappeared, but it actually disappeared in the image because I had some snow bank right there on that side covering that up. And uh, I really don't need to crop this. I the, the I'd really like it a little more to the, little more to the right, but I that would have to be a 169. I'd have to add stuff to the right to this image. But crop wise, it looks good. So pretty much we are done with that image. For me, I mean, for my edit style, that's all I would have to do on this image. So that moose one's pretty much done. All right, here's a raven picture I picked for us to do. Um, right off the bat, um, when I took this picture, I overexposed it on purpose. Let's just look at the settings real quick. I uh, should have seen them from the video. It looks like I was shooting at 1 2,000 a second at 2,500 ISO, wide open at F4. And we can zoom in on this little guy. Let's get it out here 100% in his head. And he was he's pretty tack sharp. Uh, a little bit of motion blur here, which he, he's, he's digging his head down real fast, but pretty much everything. I just like how he's pushing through the snow. So let's start our edit off on this guy. Same exact thing as last time. We're gonna use the uh, color pro sets, the very first thing I do. So I'm done here, and I believe I've looked at these already. Um, the vibrant jack of all trades look pretty good. It uh, pushed a little too much on the brightness. The contrast were fine, but we're going to apply contrast to ourselves because this is a black bird. But we're going to use, and it really sounds weird, we're going to use yellows vibrant because there is some blues and reds and, and stuff in the in, in magentas in the shoulder feathers of these birds. They're not completely black. So let's select that one. That's going to be our starting point. Now our next point I do, same as always, I come in here and I select a mask on the subject. Boom. And it grabbed perfectly, it grabbed everywhere except for at the tail. Now I don't really have to do this tail, but I'm going to go down here and do it anyway. Just to show you guys what I do around feathers. So I, come, I zoom in at 100%, here are the tail. I'm going to hit subtract, to subtract from this mask, I'm going to select brush. Move this brush down in size, about there ought to be good. And I can come in here real quickly and clean that out. So it didn't have to be cleaned out. If I got a little bit of the feather here, that's fine. Um, it's, it's good, but that's how quick it was to clean that up. So let's turn our mask off, hit zero. Um, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Let's go subtract the eye now, let's not do it later. So let's come in here at 200 and find the eye. Open this mask back up. We're gonna hit another little subtract layer in here. Brush again. Come in here and just paint this eye. Now what I'm noticing in this picture right now, this guy has part of his membrane down here already. He's blinking his eye. It just came up, there's two little membranes come down there, nictating membranes. Um, one's over there and it's got a little bit of noise in it, but that's fine, we'll fix that in a minute. All right, let's jump back out here. Let's hit O, get back out of there. So now we're going to apply the same thing. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to move this to 66% here. And the very first thing I'm going to do, like before, I'm going to add a little bit of clarity in here. 
And with birds, I have to, I usually add a little more texture than you think, and I'm getting real heavy on the texture on this guy because, see, he was zero the clarity back out for you. If I move the texture over, you'll see I'm starting to get more back in. I almost, for blackbird, for raven, it works really, really good. We're only applying this to birds, so I really like it. I'm really having to push that quite a bit over. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. We're going to come back to this clarity later in case I need to darken him back up a little bit more. And the blacks. I'm going to add a little sharpness to this guy because he's not completely as sharp as I want. And there we go. Smooth that out a little bit to the noise just a touch. And there we go. I'm fairly satisfied with that before we start getting to the other stuff. All right. So now I'm going to come up here, move him a little more over. I want to see this. I want to see this wing a little bit as I start adjusting things. All right, let's bring the shadows up. Let's see if we need to. Just, I mean, just a touch. The whites. Whites a little bit there. This is kind of a, just a sight thing, really, to be honest with you. All right, now the black. So I'm going to bring these back a little bit. Now, one thing I want to do before I get too crazy, let's kill this mask. Bring the bird back. I forgot to go down here and mess with my curve. I'm adding some lights in here. I don't like it anymore. You know, that's pretty good. I'm zooming on my bird. It's not mess it up too much. I didn't blow the snow out much. Now, now see that I don't have anything in this image because it's the high key image. I had this guy up on a little snow bank here in front of me, and right behind there was another snow bank right behind him, so it worked out perfectly. Right below him, below that snow bank, and that was a little bit of a little bit of the trail, and then behind here, but I the trail's gone that had a little bit of dirty snow in it, so I don't see it. So I overexposed the image and I got this. So since I did that, I can bring the darks back on this bird if I want to and not hurt anything. And I'm gonna just do just a touch on this guy. So let's hit the darks here, bring it back a little bit. Not too much, about five or six, so that'll be good. All right, done with the curve. Let's go back in here to my mask. Open that back up again. See if there's anything else I wanna to do to this. Um, I know what I wanna do. I want to bring the white balance back on the, get the reds out a little bit of, so what happens with the temperature, you gotta be careful. You go over here, you got a blue bird, you got a yellow bird. I wanna bring it back just a little bit um, I don't want it warm. I want to bring it back about four or five on the temperature. I think I'm good. Um, I'm going to dump some more of this blue. You know, so I introduced a little bit of blue. We're going to dump that in a minute. Um, let me put that in negative four. A little bit goes a long way here, guys. All right. So I said I was going to dump that blue. Let's go do it now. So I come down here to my uh, saturation. Dump a little bit of that blue. So if I go too far, my bird just loses all his color. Bring that back just a hair. Do I want to bring that back a little bit there? So there we go. So we got a little bit of our blue that's in that little blue and purple in there. I could change the magenta a little bit too, but that's as far as I'm going to go. All right, let's go do the eye now. Let's jump up here to about 200%. That ought to be good. Let's come here in the eye. So you can see that noise that's in this image a little bit. Um, I don't mind noise, looks natural, but let's go in here and let's get the mask on this eye, brush, dial this eye in. Now when I apply this eye thing like I did before, the enhance, I'm gonna get a lot more, yeah, that's what I figure, I'm gonna get a lot more noise than I want in here. Not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the whites back a bit. We're gonna pull the highlights back a bit. We're bring this saturation down a touch. Then what we're going to do in here, we are going to bring that noise and up smooth that out a little bit, and we are going to dehaze this eye just a touch here. All right. Now what I'm going to do is this: the raven's eye is actually brown, so I'm going to actually add a little more temperature to it. Not that much. Just a touch. I, this is stuff nobody's ever going to see, but I just want to bring it up a little bit. But we did reduce a little bit of that noise in eye. So I'm coming here. Here's what it was before. Here what it was after. A little sharper on that. It, like I said, you can see that nictating membrane now here. Um, trying to clarity a little bit more. 
Clary is going to help get that iris underneath that thing a little bit more. And I think that is it. Touch contrast back to 14. There we go. So that's about it. So here it is before, here it is after. All right, so let's zoom out and see what we got. So here's our bird. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to mask this bird again. I am going to work on this snow a little bit. It seems weird to do, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to, again, we're going to do the bird, click the triple dot, invert the mask. And now I got just the snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to add a lot of texture. What that's going to do is that is going to give this snow more texture in here. So I can turn it on and off. You see, just is very, very subtle. And a touch of clarity in here. And that also helps this area in here kind of define a little more. Now what it did is it brought this little bit here, which we'll get rid of that here in just a second. And that's very simple. We're gonna create that brush like I did before, create a brush. I'm gonna show the clarity, texture, Sharpness down, show that noise up. We're gonna add a little bit of highlights, a little, or sorry, not add highlights. No, well, highlights fine. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of white. Not a whole lot of white because we want to change the color. Increase the size of our brush so it's softer on the edges. Come down here and just paint that guy out real quick. We'll paint a little bit here. Just make sure there's nothing else here. There we go. Still a little blue. So you know, let's take this temperature out we added before. It looks fine. Looks good. I like it. Um, again, composition, not a whole lot. I mean, we're breaking our rule of thirds a lot. Um, the bird's eye is towards the right, but it's just enough to the left where his legs are on the rule of thirds. Um, you need to learn the rule of thirds and all these comp these things before you break them, but I, I don't mind this picture. Again, I was out just doing quick and dirty stuff today. I wasn't really going out looking for a banger, but I, I like this little raven shot. All right, just to show you what it looked like before we did all this, let's just reset the picture for giggles. That's what we looked at before we started. If we apply our settings we just did back in there. Boom, there's a rat when we're done. All right, I want to show you one more thing. Um, if, you, if I was shooting all these ravens with pretty much the same settings and they're the same area, same type of light on them, I can copy the settings I did here. So how do you do that? Um, go to Settings, Copy Settings. Um, hit the mask. I only do the first mask, not the rest of them, because that's the initial mask. Um, I don't do the transform or crop, but I can copy those settings. And the reason I do that, I'm going to show you something else you can do in Lightroom to fix something, a little extra tip for you. So I do have this picture here of this raven. He's flapping his wings. Pretty interesting shot. But he's too close to the left, close to the, you know, he's just, it's too tight. I mean, that's what it was, the 500 millimeter. It wasn't that far away from him. So the very first thing I can do in here is I come in here and hit settings and paste settings. I can paste the settings from that other image. This may take a second. What I'm going to do is try to remask this bird, find things pretty cool, a lot quicker. One thing I always check first is I look in here. Do I have anything errant in here? Looks like I, yeah, I do. So we need to delete these delete brushes here. So come to brush two, delete brush two, and delete brush one. I only want the initial subject to detect. And if I see anything else I need to remove out of here, which I'm fine with this, because we're, we're really looking at, you know, changing this bird out. Um, and I can also come in here real quickly and do that eye while we're here. So go to 200%. I'm not going to subtract, I'm just going to add a new layer. And let me dial this down a little bit. And I'm not going to be precise on this because we're enhance, enhance, enhance. And same thing we did last time. Let's bring these whites down this down. Let's uh, smooth that noise out a little bit. Bring that sharpness down a little bit. It looks a lot better. Um, a little more clarity. That's it. All right. So we're done with that eye. We're done with this bird. All right. Zoom back out. All right. That bird looks better. Oh, that looks a lot better this one. So again, I'm too close to the edge of this bird. Real quickly, I, since I edited that other bird, I applied the settings on this one. I'm at a good starting point. Actually, I like this. It looks pretty good. Um, and the eye looks a lot better. Um, I should have shoved that noise over uh, to drop that noise out on that other eye a lot more too. But anywho, we are here. So how do I get some room on this bird left and right or up? And, you know, how do I recompose this bird? Because I have nothing to work with. Well, let's go to Lightroom and do a little bit of a cheat on this image. 
Now, the first thing I'll talk about, the image that you take and how you edit it is yours. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing something wrong. You're doing something. It's, it's your image. You're artistic. This is art. Make it what you want it to be. And that's what we're fixing to do here. So how do I add more room top, left, and bottom? We're going to come over here on the left. We're coming down to the crop tool. It's about the fifth one down from the bottom. We hit it. And we're going to set original ratio. The reason that jumped to 16.9 is when I do videos, I do 16.9 on the videos. So all you do here is make sure you got these lines. If not, click inside here and I'll give you these little lines. We are going to add some room to this image. This seems a little weird. But let's see. Let's zoom out so we can see. We zoom out. All right. So let's add a little more to the right of him. Let's put him, and then you can kind of put him where you want to. You can put him a little more. Now, this is a little aggressive, so you can see right here the distance I'm adding here. So up here at the top, you want to make sure you have content or a field. If you don't, this is going to be like a transparent image here. This is not going to be perfect. It's probably going to give me some weird lines in here because there's a little bit of a line right there. And it's probably going to repeat that. So let's hit it and see what it does. This doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to go just a little bit on the outside and then, you know, put it back in Lightroom, bring it back and keep increasing until you get there. Um, actually, I don't like this crop just yet. Let's bring this back in a little bit more. So I'm putting his eye on that line and part of his feet on that line. So it, it kind of works with rule thirds. All right. I got that kind of where I like it. It's okay. Now I'm going to hit the checkbox here. It's going to commit it. It's going to take a few minutes. It's going to go in here and raster this guy. It's going to try to fill in that extra area there. Doesn't always get it. When I'm doing high key images or a dark key, it's or a darker behind it, it's easier because it's going to grab it. Now we do see there's those lines I was talking about. Not a big deal. We're going to go over and back into Lightroom and we'll, again, we'll basically increase the highlights and stuff and make that little bit of shadow go away because again, we're high keyed. High key, I love winter because high key images are so easy to do. All right, so we hit file, save. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to take a little longer because the image got bigger because we're already at 45 megapixel image and we're going to be making that bigger because we added all that extra space to it. All right, we're done there. Let's go back over to Lightroom. Here we are. So what we can do instead of doing the brush and brushing that out, I'm going to mask this bird. I'm going to, once it's masked, I'm going to invert it. And I can come in here. I can just do the shadows, the highlights. I can drop that clarity and texture a little bit, and they're already gone. They're already gone out of there. So now I've already got those lines. They're not here anymore. I am done. The image is done. And that's how we took that bird right here. And it went too far. So it went from that to that. And that quick a stroke. Um, sometimes you need a little more space and actually that's kind of a neat little image there again for just going out in the afternoon just looking for some ravens and just taking what I got came out pretty good but anyway that is my editing process we took those from the out in the field all the way through the edit image and that's kind of how I edit images um, for quick and dirties uh, again apply, apply a pro set to get started if you need to from there, I mask the image. Uh, I mess my clarity and texture just a little bit, see what I got. And then from there, adjust the shadows, highlight balance. I didn't have to drop the highlights on this bird at all. Um, normally, I'll drop my highlights, raise my shadows and whites until I get it where I want it. It's just an eyeball thing. And then, of course, come down here and play with your curves and the lights a little bit if you need to. Cur highlights and highlights and darks. Um, pretty much it. That's how I edit images. That's how I get done. That's where I get there. So that's it. All right, now for the photo giveaways. For the 4,000 subscriber one, the winner is Bruce Grainer, or Graner, I'm sorry, butcher your name, I'm sorry. Um, that's for the bear print. For the one year anniversary print, it's gonna be Mark Evanson. And Mark, I'll pick a random image, maybe get you two smaller ones and send them out to your one bigger one. But anyway, that's uh, Bruce Grainer and Mark Evanson. What you guys gonna do, same thing, just go to my page, email me, hit me on Instagram, whichever and we'll work out how to get that photo to you. Pretty simple. All right, guys, as always, that's the end of the video. Uh, like, subscribe, watch the video all the way through. That's the best way to help out the channel, or you can donate or you can join to the channel for membership if you want to also. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.